What's going on, everyone? Travis Brown, Robert Cessna of the Eagle. We're here in Bryant Denny Stadium. We made the trek. Uh, not so sure that AM's team did. They, they look good at times in this game. It was better than the Vanderbilt game, uh, but they didn't come out with a win in this one. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us here. If you're on Facebook Live, you're on Periscope or the Eagle.com, be sure to throw in any questions, comments, suggestions, anything that you have about the game there. Alex Miller. Uh, who's back home in BCS, we'll get to those as you bring those in. Cease, we'll start out with this. What was your initial uh, takeaways from this A&M loss, 52-24 uh, to 24 here at Brighton Denny? Yes, we have to look at the scores because we don't get the printouts like we used to. Everything's done by computer, so you have to rely on your mind. And, oh, my gosh, after a game like that, there's so many plays to try to remember. But the bottom line to me is last week at this time we were talking about what was the offense going to do? The offense was absolutely horrible. How's this team going to score? And coming into the season, we talked about, you know, that the offense was supposed to be so good that they lose people. But we're trying to get to, now we're going to talk about the defense. Defense can't stop. And I understand they're playing Alabama, but I did think the defense would do better than what it did, just not able to put a lot of pressure on Matt Jones except for the interception which was really a bad play by them. They could have got a free five yards, changes the whole thing. But 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 eight but eight of offense year three in Elko. Yes, I thought Alabama would score 40 points, 40 to 42 points, but they eased up at the end. They could have scored probably 60 points. And I think that is a concern moving forward because I don't care who you're playing, you're going to have, to have some defense. So an AM's lack of defense, and you can say, well, they got off the field to start the second half, but I, and they got a turnover, uh, almost scored off that turnover, but still, they took away the running game, but the passing game, way too many guys wide open. Yeah, yeah, I think the defensive secondary, that's why I started out my three takes on, is that they were a little bit exposed today. They, they, they looked like same old, same old against Vanderbilt, against the freshman quarterback, Tim Skills. You get Mac Jones out here, you get the speed that they have, on at wide receiver, it was a different story. I mean, they had, uh, I believe it was four touchdowns of over about 50 yards, um, including the, the, the most telling one was they had second and 22, second 22. all the way back down in their own territory. Uh, it seemed like a great time for AM to come back, get a stop. Um, the Aggies allow an 87 yard touchdown to Jalen Waddell over the top of the defensive secondary. Um, it looks like they beat Damani Richardson on that one a little bit. Uh, uh, Jalen Jones, the true freshman quarterback, didn't necessarily have a great game in the defensive secondary. You have Florida coming in here next week, uh, one of the best passing offenses in the SEC now. Things don't bode well for that matchup with what, you, what we saw out here from the defensive secondary. Not when you got to face Trask next week, the best quarterback in the SEC, and then you have to go to Mississippi State in the air raid, which will have two more weeks to be better than what it was last week. And getting back to the 87-yard touchdown to Waddle, if you go back to the previous possession when a and held to start the second half, the receiver was wide open. Mitchie was wide open, and Jones missed him, or that would have been about a 75-yard touchdown. So not only did they have all those big strikes, they missed one. And so now you got to shake your head because early I thought they were getting pressure. You even get the, the interception was a tip. Uh, by Johnson, uh, Marvin, uh, you know, uh, not, not, nice return by Leal. You go the next possession, there was a nice rush by Clemens. So, but that's it. Uh, the defense did not play well. And you could say, well, they got three great wide receivers, but it's the SEC. Everybody's got good wide receivers. So it's, it's kind of, everybody talks about the Big 12, but AM would have had a score to me. 40, 45 points tonight to keep pace to beat Alabama. Right, Matt Jones, 20, 27, 435 yards, four touchdowns. On the other side, Helen Mond, 25 of 44, 318 yards and three touchdowns. The 25 from 24 is a little concerning. I liked what the SEC analyst said, though. You'd rather see Kellen Mond throwing at about 50% and not take many sacks and take a lot of sacks and throw for maybe 60%. Um, but 318 yards, three touchdowns, that shouldn't necessarily be a bad line for Kellen Mond in the game. And yet, the offense, while it was better than Vanderbilt, for sure, still seemed like it stopped and started a lot. Mond had one really bad throw. 
and that was obviously the pick six. And without that throw, he really had a very credible game, but you can't do that. And that one mistake was so critical after he never tied it up 14, 14, then that put him back up 28, 14. That was such a bad, bad throw. Then Anaya Smith has a great game, but he drops a wide open fourth and two. So AM's offense to keep pace, they had those two plays cost them. When you play in Alabama, Alabama didn't play a clean game. Alabama didn't even come close to playing a clean game. Alabama doesn't really have a running game, but they got a great offensive line. And I think they'll be better as the year goes, goes on offensively. But when I'm looking at AM, I also think I got to give Jimbo Fisher credit. I criticized him last week because the offense wasn't doing well. He adjusted. What did he do? Get the ball out of out of Mon's hands quickly. They spread the field a lot. They went with a lot of no backs or swing the guy out, and it worked to AM's favor as long as Mon was quickly throwing that ball. But when you're playing a team like Alabama, they weren't able to take those big deep threats. People were saying, oh, play Demas, play these guys. He got in, but that offensive line has not proven yet, particularly against a team like uh, you know Alabama. You can hold that ball. For, and Jimbo said that in the post game. They got to get to where they can hold the ball one or two more seconds to make those eight yard swing passes, eighteen and twenty five yard down and outs. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I looked over at our, our uh, colleague Brett Zorneman because at the end of the game there, Hayes King got some action. The, the, the backups, we know now, at least for this game, that, that the freshman out of Longview, he got the next nod in cleanup duty, and, and he's marching down the field doing some zone reads, some pulls, some running the ball. He actually ends up finishing as a and leading rusher. But, right. but for everyone who is clamoring for Hayes King coming from Helen Mon, he looked pretty nervous out there. His passes weren't crisp, and he threw that interception in the end zone at, at, at the end of the game. I think – well, I'm not saying Hayes King is going to be a good quarterback, and he had some good spark and control of the offense. I think another reason why we know Kellen Mond is the guy is that, I mean, the guys behind him are tentative. The guys behind him still have some room to grow, and they're still behind what Kellen Mond can do out here on offense. Mond performed himself pretty well today, even with, with the gap of the interception return. Come on, Matt Jones also threw. They, they all said each other. They each made one huge mistake that cost their team a touchdown. So, you know, Mon comes in here. It's a wash. Mon did not cost an AM this game. And once again, it's, I'm kind of surprised that the defense didn't play better. That being said, I thought it'd be about 42. But I, it was the way Alabama scored their points. I thought some of them were way too easy. Third and longs, like Carol said, like third and 22. And that was after Alabama made like three mistakes. And normally you say, just kick the ball out of there. No, Alabama went for the home run. And Aiden was unable to get a sack. I don't think Aiden got a sack the whole game. I got a double in the fourth quarter, going to the fourth quarter. Nobody had a sack because, once again, the receivers were getting open. Cam, Cam Brown, Chase Lane, they made catches tonight. Wiedermeyer. Uh, well, he had like eight, and he had one taken away that was real close. And it, it, he didn't control it by the NFL and the deals. But the bottom line is, they made a lot of good catches. So AM can move the ball through the ground. But when you put Spiller back there, you can see why Smith's in the backfield. Right. Because, oh my gosh, he beat an All American linebacker for his touchdown. But Alabama had to put an All American linebacker on a guy with four or five speed. So that's the mismatch you get with Smith, but you don't get that with Spiller. I was about to say, Spiller, uh, excuse me, Smith has proven why he's their all around guy. Oh. He's their mismatch guy. You, you, you look at um, his, his, his touchdown, it's their, their best offensive highlight of the season. He catches up, they, they, they do, and I believe that was a series, and I couldn't even go back, I need to go back to the film on this one. That was a series that was started with Spiller in at the huddle on first down they had some time they actually looked and saw what alabama had there subs smith in for spiller on, on that play nothing happened that first play but i believe it was on the, the second or third play where when they moved down that they actually started getting in the ball then they get across the, 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 the midfield he's wide open in the flat runs out looks like he's going to be pushed out of bounds uh ends up staying in bounds and scores a touchdown i believe it was uh wallace the guy who's had the interception was the same guy who didn't right. fully pull it right, was the, didn't pull it, push him fully out. He ended up scoring, and 
and Smith. Smith has proven that he is going to be Mon's security blanket, but also the guy that the uh, opposing defenses are going to have to watch uh, every week. His last touchdown, the one I liked, AM and had four wideouts, and they had Wiedermeyer flanked out. So they, in essence, had a five wide receiver set, a la uh, Kevin Sullivan But all Smith did was run a skinny post, so to speak, where was it from the 25? He just beat that linebacker so bad and mon through a beautiful pass. And I'm saying, I don't care who you play, if you put five guys wide, and one of them is Smith, one of them is Wiedermeyer, who is a huge target, he's got great hands, and if Cam Brown can continue to catch balls like that, along with once in a while Preston, then you're going to have a mismatch. And if Demas gets as good as he, he could, but can your line give you that extra second? Can your line give you that extra second? Demas did get in. They, they targeted him. He got in on about a handful of plays. They targeted him once, but he got caught up really bad on the defensive back, and Mon just threw it right over his head. So that's kind of all that we saw from him today. Uh, good to point out, Anaya Smith, six catches for 123 yards, led all receivers in yardage. Uh, Weidemeyer had uh, eight catches for 82 yards. Um, and and uh, did some good stuff there. Ryan Rennick with a touchdown. Uh, another thing that was curious, Alex. Before while well, we kind of get everything reset here first, let's say what um, if you have any questions, comments, you're watching on any of our Facebook channels. Be sure to fire those in. Alex, read those out and get you. But Alex, uh, watching on the TV, of course, we don't really we get to listen. We don't get to watch on the TV broadcast. What were some of the things that that stood out to you in this game? I mean, it starts with AM's secondary play. I mean, the offense definitely had much better of a game than it did last weekend, but its secondary killed AM. I mean, Mac Jones, he had touchdown passes of 63, 78, and 87 yards. You know, it, it, it seemed as if AM's defense was going to be able to hold its own against Alabama. We knew they could score points, we knew they had playmakers. I, I'll, I'll admit it, I was wrong. Uh, going into the game, I said that I thought AM's defense was going to go toe-to-toe with Bama, and they didn't. Uh, and, now, and now there's this new giant red flag with the Aggies that's kind of glaring uh, in front of everyone. And it's kind of alarming when you think about that a has got to play Florida and Mississippi State the next two weeks, two best uh, passing yeah. teams in the conference. Alex, the secondary is a ms primary problem. That's that's what I put my that's what exactly what I put in my three takes. We all think oh, like, that's horrible. we're all great. Here. That's horrible. We're all no. great. Here. Horrible. No, but I will say I, I felt like I felt like Kellen had a much better game. Uh, obviously, he had the the bad interception at the end of the first half, but you know he looked more confident in the pocket. The receivers made better catches. Uh, I thought he had much better of a game. He had his first 300 yard passing game for the first time in 11 games. So uh, it. Even though it, it, it was a bad loss for AM, there were some positives in there. This was this was a positive situation on the offensive side. I think a, a, actually I would give it a big positive, consider how bad the Vanderbilt game was. And also I, I want to give a, a negativity. I'm always ripped on the offensive line. I gotta give them a good grade tonight because they kept them on. Uh, you know, back pretty. He was hit a few times because they blitzed several times. They blitz. They got an All American sergeant. They got an All American Moses. They blitzed several times and couldn't get to one in forty four passes. So I got to give the uh, the whole line of credit. I got to get on Seth Small for missing that field goal. Yeah, yeah. comes out uh, a good drive. Uh, they get they get four good plays. Get the personnel wrong. A and M made more mistakes tonight on personnel packages yes. than they did on turnovers. And those will beat you in a close game no matter who you're playing. So I know we'll talk to Jimbo about that on Monday, but personnel problems on your offense. Get the right people out there. Save those. And I think that played into the end of the first half when they don't have any timeouts. Because so, on that drive, yeah, on that drive, they, they have a great drive go down. I believe had to use two timeouts on that drive just because of personnel they issues. They, uh, they burned their, their, their last two there. And don't – those are very – valuable timeouts because they resulted in no points to set up what was a, a missed field goal. And it's, and it's those little things. It's just small. has got to make that field goal because you make that field goal. That's 37 yards. You're on the road. There's no crowd. Nobody's booing you. And, uh, you know, I always listen to the broadcast and uh, Nesbitt or whatever said, misses it badly. I mean, it wasn't even close. It looked like one of my tee shots. 
at Gary Blair's tournament that went 15 <laughs> yards, and you go, oh, my gosh, your wife could hit it further than that, Cessna. Well, uh, we, we have to talk a little bit about the momentum shift there at the end of the first half uh, when A.M. goes for it on fourth and two, uh, has a nice mid wide open on the check down. Mon hits a great pass to him right Beautiful. in his hands. Beautiful. He's actually probably picked not only the first down, oh. but some yards. Big, big they would have probably, you would think, we've gotten some kind of points there before the second half when Alabama's going to get the ball back. It turns into Alabama getting some points. They don't get points at the beginning of the second half, but big momentum is swinger. It's 14 pointer because remember Smith makes the makes the catch in the back of the end zone and touchdown. That's after uh, the other Smith doesn't make the catch, and you can tell how big a play it was because CBS kept showing the sidelines and kept showing Mon during the play. Mon could not believe that Smith didn't catch that. He jumped up and went like that in the offensive line. That was a big downer because AM on fourth and two was going to get a huge, huge lift. They were going to be pumped up. It was either going to be an 11 point game and a half or a seven point game and a half. And he drops it. And what, what, five, six players later, Alabama's lining up to make it uh, whatever, what I mean, I mean a, a, a 14 point lead. And you can't do that. You can't do that on the road. Not when AM screwed up twice a little bit to get behind. That was such a huge play. And uh, Anaya Smith was one of the stars of the game, so to speak, for A&M's. But he's only a sophomore. Got to make that play. Yeah, yeah. I know we started to talk about it a little bit. Kind of what is uh, the – I know people will need to go to the Eagle tomorrow to see – or this, later this evening to see your grades. What are some of your initial grades for this? You know, I can honestly say I didn't do any grade yet. I mean, I, I have it in my mind. But it was kind of unusual. I usually don't go into the post games and get on the post games. Yeah. So I actually went on and asked questions. So I'm a little behind. But I think it's kind of a, a BC day. You know, last time it was basically D's. You Vanderbilt. Need some man assets and BC powder. You know, and, and you know, defense kind of get defense gonna get a Robert Sesta grade. You better, you better, you better get back to school because that defense. You better open up the playbook. You know, all week long. We kind of ripped on the offense. Well, this week we're going to rip on the defense. So maybe they'll, they'll, they'll it's still early. Everything changes week, ceiling changes week to week. And the defense better be ready for Kyle Trask because the best tight end in the SEC is coming to town. The wideouts are pretty good. And Trask will hold the ball a lot longer than Jones. And he's more accurate than Jones. And like, uh, like what's that guy's name? Alex just said, Jones just threw like three seven yard passes. What's Trask going to throw if AM doesn't get pressure on him or start finding receivers? I mean, that last touchdown, any three of us would have caught it. We wouldn't have scored, but we didn't get 40. Miles Jones was, was, was 15 yards behind that Michi guy, or whoever it was, we caught it. He caught it like this. He's like, you're, you're, you're throwing out in the backyard, I'm like, hey, here you go. Oh, hey, here you go. You go man. Yeah, you know, you know Jalen Jones, obviously talented. Five-star prospect, starting as a true freshman, but man, Nick Saban in Alabama, they went right after him. Right. I think they had, I think they had three touchdown passes uh, with uh, Jones in coverage, and Jimbo said it after the game. Uh, that was a true SEC baptism uh, for the first-year player. You know, I I'm curious if this is just a one-game thing or if this is kind of a big red flag that we're going to see throughout the rest of the season. How does a and secondary respond? And, you know, Jones with the bad game, they're going to stick with them. They didn't make a move until the fourth quarter. Brian George came in at corner, but they they rolled with the Joneses the whole game, even after Jalen kind of struggled. And Miles Jones, too, he gave up the big play, although he did almost catch Jalen Waddle on that touchdown run uh, over the over the middle of the field. But, yeah, uh, I'm really curious to see where this goes from here for the secondary. I have three more points to get to. That's a really important one there that you mentioned, um, Alex. I think uh, Jalen Jones is going to be someone who's going to kind of need some some work. Um, but I, the, the second one, as far as your grades go, I think a lot of conversation was going into um, the play calling, Jimbo and offense. He did a better job, and I Much think better. they knew. Oh, the other thing about the secondary, I knew I was missing something, was the fact that Alabama's. Uh, 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 Offensive line is so good, and that's what Jimbo said in his in his, uh, his his weekly show that the, the offensive line is so good. It might be the best they see this year. That 
their defensive front linebackers really couldn't get anywhere close to Matt Jones. And in turn, that, that hurts your defensive secondary. I think in a future games, it might not be as telling to the defensive secondary because they will get a little bit more pass rush. They're just, you're not going to get a pass rush against this offensive line. And that, that they're certainly hurt the secondary. The same play calling with Jimbo, I think it was better. I think I, I liked how they got Helen started out throwing quick little slant passes, get the chains moving. Um, I, I get, keep their pressure away from Kellen by just giving him the first read, make it go, make the throw. I, I think that helped get him into the game. Uh, I, I like the play call. They spread the field a lot more, and I love that because, once again, is they got the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Why don't we tomorrow? Smith, Mon, and even you could say, uh, you know, Cam Brown showed flashes. So once again, it is Aiden went from no playmakers last week on offense to three or four this weekend against one of the best defenses in the country. Maybe they're not there yet. That's why you got to be encouraged about Aiden's offense. Eight wide receivers with catches today. Uh, we mentioned some of those this starters, those studs. And this is what I'm going to close with because it's something that caught my eye, and, and even more so the, the comments that they had after the game caught my eye. For the first time in several years, Kellen Mond doesn't come out to take the coin flip. In fact, last week, you know, they have new protocols where you can you, – typically four guys go out there. Now you can select four guys, but three have to kind of stay back at the, at the numbers while one goes and does for COVID procedures. Last week, Kellen was the one who went out and was actually taking the flip, making the calls – Whatever. This week, they only sent out three captains. It's Carper, it's Carson Green, and it's Michael Clemens. Mon runs out with the team, takes the ball, and gets some warm-up throws. So we asked Jimbo about it. He said he wasn't a captain this week so that Kellen could take that time that he would be doing captain's duties to warm up his arm, make some throws, uh, get into the system of the game. When we asked Kellen about that, and I asked him, was that his idea? Was that Jimbo's idea? He kind of says it's just something that we talked about. And then I asked him, well, do you feel like it it helped? Do you feel like you got your arm more loose? He says, well, either way was fine with me. So it it kind of didn't seem like they were on the same page with that, but I could be reading too much into it. I think that was all Jimbo because going back to Kellen missed his first three throws last week. And even though Vanderbilt had the ball for six minutes, so he should have been ready to go, but he wasn't. I think it was Jimbo's flight way of saying, you need to be ready when you hit that field because he wasn't last week. And I thought Mon was a much, uh, he took responsibility for the, the interception. He said, I got to be better. He talked about he's got to make better throws. I, and you remember last year, last, last week, he came off and said he thought he played a clean game. He w- alluded to last week saying he had to be better. He didn't play that well. I think once he went and looked at the film this week, last week, he said, I had a crappy Vanderbilt game. That's what he said to himself. I believe it. And I think Jimbo reinforced that by saying, hey, you're not going to be a team captain. I'm not, he might be wrong. I might be wrong. We'll be the first time we were both wrong, but that's our ideas. Definitely, definitely. Well, I think that's all the time we have. We have to go right get that content for you for after the game. Our my three takes are already up on the eagle.com. We'll have Alex will have all the video from the press conferences up here shortly if you want to watch that. Then be sure to check back later tonight and tomorrow for our recaps and our stories. Uh, and we'll be back uh, this next week to break down the big matchup against Florida. Uh, for Alex Miller, Robert Sesson, I'm Travis Brown. Thanks so much, and we'll talk to you this week.